since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench. And by Junk Be Gone. And by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Source here in the Junk Being On Studios. We appreciate you joining us for the next 90 minutes. We're going to be talking about a good day for Chris Lofton, a bad day for Tennessee basketball, a good week for Georgia football, what that means for Tennessee football. We've got recruiting for Vol football. We've got Vol football and where they fit on the college football food chain. And we've got Vol basketball as in what the heck just happened against Kentucky yesterday. We'll break all that down over the next 90 minutes. So let's just start so we'll have plenty of time with the guys to talk. First segment of our program brought to you by Junk Be Gone. And uh, folks, their 15-yard driveway dumpsters are now just $299 for up to seven days during the month of January. So you've got a couple of weeks to take advantage of this. Perfect for cleaning out an attic, a basement, a garage, or more. Includes up to two tons of debris. And if you've got two tons of debris in your house, trust me, you need to call Junk Be Gone. Uh, $299 through January. Call them this week. I use them all the time. And as always, free delivery of that dumpster within 30 miles of Knoxville. Junkbegone.biz to learn more. All right. Let's welcome in the uh, first wave of panelists. We have Bob Hodge and Justin Hamilton waiting off set. They'll be joining us a little bit later. But to talk Vol basketball right off the top, we have right over here, Ryan Callahan from GoVols247.com. Good to see you again, Ryan. Thanks for having me back. Mark Pankratz right here, former Vol basketball assistant, former D1 basketball player. Mark, thanks. Thanks for having me. Right over, I'm going to skip you for a second. Right there, we got Vince Farrar from 991 The Sports Animal. Vince, thank oh, you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And next to you, Jimmy Himes from 991 The Sports Animal. And Jimmy, uh, congratulations on your announcement this week that you will be retiring end of March. Yes. All right, so you'll be, you'll be stepping down after a long and storied career. I've uh, been covering the Vols since, what, 85, 86? 90, 85. 85. Uh, I am thrilled that you won't be retiring from this show. We're still going to have <laughs> you on here. I appreciate that. Uh, but I do want to say that I don't, and I, I, this is completely true, I don't know where this market goes to replace you. In terms of doing this job right for as long as you've done it, you need three things, good sources, good judgment, good intentions. And it's rare to find somebody that has all three of those. You have all three of those. I'm proud to have you here. I congratulate you on stepping forward for the next phase of your life, even though I'm gonna lure you back in here with a rope every Sunday, or <laughs> most Sundays. All right, let's get into this thing. Uh, it was supposed to be a fun day on Rocky Top yesterday with the loft in Jersey going up in the rafters. Uh, Kentucky came in here vulnerable, weakened, Oh, it was going to be a blowout. And at the first media timeout, it looked pretty good. Tennessee up 8-zip. Then apparently Calipari lit a fire under his team. Tennessee kind of stumbled and bumbled their way into a loss. Uh, let's listen to what Rick Barnes had to say very quickly, about a minute, just his take on everything that went wrong yesterday. I thought uh, their game plan was obviously to every game. Not, it's not just this game. People really try to work hard to take away our perimeter players. And... Um, we missed a lot of shots at the rim. I mean, we, some of them uncontested, a couple of them mildly contested. But the fact is, and we had some looks that we didn't make. And and uh, inside, I thought Uros really did a, as good a job as he could possibly do and still got to get more consistency, consistency from a couple guys that we need to give it to us every night. But guard play wasn't what we know it needs to be. And, and – um, I thought we let a little bit of the offense affect us, but the difference in the game was rebounding. I mean, they were just did whatever they wanted to do on the off, on the on the boards. I mean, you look at what they shot uh, from the floor in the three point line. That's good enough to win most games, but you can't foul people as much as we fouled. And we've talked about that for weeks now. We've got to stop committing fouls and make people play. But we gave them too many points there. But. Got to give them credit. I thought they played hard. They had a, uh, and we told the guys coming in they were going to make adjustments with their lineup, which they did. But uh, just we got to we got to have better overall play with our guards, perimeter guys, and a little bit more consistency with our post guys inside. The guys have been around. 
All right. He covered an awful lot there. He talked about <laughs> rebounding being the difference in the heat. <laughs> he, he summed it up nicely. Right. I couldn't have covered it all in a minute. Uh, he talked about rebounding, in his opinion, was the difference in the game. Talked about the fact that he's been telling his team for a while we're fouling too much. Mark, I'll ask you, what was the biggest story yesterday? What was the biggest what went wrong? And then everybody else, when he's done, just jump in. Well, I think what, what Kentucky did is they made our guards make twos. They were, they were going to make them give up them drives, which we have, Barnes talked about. We missed some of those easy bunnies. Uh, but they did a good job switching out on some of our motion offensive things to make our catches a little bit further off the three-point line. Obviously, when you're not making jump shots, that makes it harder. But we've been shooting those deeper threes, which we didn't make yesterday. Um, but the guard play was the difference. Uh, Burns talked about doing your job. And the, you know, you got guys that weren't rebounding. We'll talk about the rebounding piece and Euros and some of these guys. But to me, it was the other guys. You got Julian Phillips. When you got a guy like the Sheboy, mm -hmm. you got to do everything you can. And Euros did a heck of a job of just keeping him from getting rebounds. The thing is, the other guys on the team, they had eight offensive rebounds to compared to Tennessee's four as, as a team. Mm -hmm. And um, the following piece that we talked about, we're a physical team. The refs, it was interesting because they let you play inside, very physical, didn't really call much. But then they were calling the, the not ticky-tack, but grabbing stuff on the, on the perimeter that led to the free throw difference. We not talked about... 22 out of 25 from the free throw line for Kentucky, we're 7 for 10. Mm -hmm. That's a 15-point difference in a 7-point ball game. And we'll show this in a minute as, again, but not only that, it was just Kentucky's day. They're a 65% shooting team on the year, and they went 22 of 25, 88% against you. Gentlemen, uh, what went wrong? When, you, when you're having trouble shooting like Tennessee was from three-point range, you've got to find other ways to win. So you're 3 of 21, right? Well, you got one way to counter that is to out-rebound the other team, right? Well, you got killed there. The other way is to get to the foul line more. Well, you, as yeah. Mark pointed out, you lost by 15 there. The other thing is, by my count, this is unofficial, I had Tennessee missing eight layups. You can't do that. So if you're not going to shoot well from three-point range, what are the ways you yeah. counter it to win a game? And Tennessee did none of those. Right. And you can't have Julian Phillips and Olivier Comwa have more fouls than points or rebounds. Julian Phillips did not get to the free throw line again. He has six free throws in five SEC games where he was leading the conference in free throw attempts coming in the conference play. So there's a big difference in his aggressiveness and his effectiveness. I think sometimes the motion offense, he, he, he's deferring and he's not aggressive. I don't know if he feels like, hey, i got to kind of blend in or what, but um, that, that's uh, something they can improve on. And what happened to Olivier Cumwell we saw a couple of games ago that was 10 for 10? And you thought, all right, this is a potential mm -hmm. difference-making element of this basketball team. And now Barnes has a quick hook on him. If he doesn't like what he sees, he gets him out of there and stretches. So they, they need to fix a number of those things. And the problem with, Mark, what you talked about in defending the guards and forcing the twos versus the threes is now that's a little bit of a blueprint, right, that we could see other teams uh, uh, you know, attempt against Tennessee. Yeah, the, the Olivia thing's interesting to me because I think it boils down to his physicality. Barnes talks about you know, the physicality to go get rebounds, physicality to defend. Me, I see it physicality offense. When he's got it going a little bit, he's posting up deeper. Yeah. He's getting the ball closer to the rim. He's not doing that. When he, when he doesn't do that, he struggles from the offense, which then dictates his defense, and Barnes right. got that hook. I'm hesitant to throw the word soft out there. That gets thrown around a lot, but it did seem like Kentucky was the more aggressive team, the more physical team yesterday in rebounding. Mm -hmm. Josiah Jordan James said it after yeah. the game. Yeah. They wanted it yeah. more. They were more aggressive. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you can see, I mean, rebounding is an effort thing, of course, a lot of times. So that, uh, I mean, basically everything that you needed to go wrong for a team like Kentucky to have a chance to win a game like that did. Hey. Um, and so Tennessee being the better team, I would say on paper, still just did so many things wrong across the board that – uh, it was going to be hard to win that game with all that going, bad shooting, bad rebounding, getting outshot at the free throw line, everything going against them. I do think Kentucky deserves a little bit of credit. I mean, it shows that sure. they had some talent to build off of. Yeah. It was motivation yeah. for them. Also, not a great look for Severe Wheeler, some of the best assist guys in the league. They played better without him. They played freer and smarter. And um, So we'll, we'll see what, if this is a new Kentucky team or if it's a one-game rise up against Tennessee. Let me put up some numbers here uh, that I thought were interesting, uh, kind of a tail of the tape thing. Um, if we could get, there we go. Uh, as I mentioned, Tennessee up 8 nothing at the first time out. Uh, we talked about the free throw numbers that you see there on your screen. Uh, Kentucky out rebounded Tennessee just for the record 43 to 23. And Tennessee came in averaging 41 rebounds a game. They were second best in the SEC coming in yesterday and just got trashed. Uh, Sheboy 
out-rebounded all four of UT's bigs yesterday by himself. I think it was 14 to 10 or something. Uh, Tennessee, Mike Wilson of the Sentinel had this stat. Tennessee is now 14 and 0 on the season when winning the rebounding edge. They are 0 and 3 when losing it. I went back and looked over the last two years versus major conference foes only. So I took out the Longwoods and East Tennessee State and Presbyterian. Tennessee 28 and 11 in the last two years against the major teams. Okay, cool. 22 and 2 when they outshoot their opponent from three point range. 6 and 9 when they don't. What's the bigger difference there? The rebounding this year, you look at that, it's 14 0, it's 0 3. That's pretty definitive. The shooting your threes, 22 and 2 when you, when you outshoot the opponent, that's pretty definitive as well. Is What's that, the bigger deal? Is it by percentage or number of threes made? By percentage. Yeah, that, uh, that's a pretty telling stat. And, and sometimes when Tennessee's not hitting threes, they don't stop shooting sometimes. Yes, but, yeah. yeah. Although that's, you, you could say that's an element of college basketball now just because everybody True. fires them up. But, yes, well, but, right. you know, I'll try, I'll try to use a football analogy. I'm not a football guy. But you, no, you got to think. I can speak that. But you got to <laughs> think about it. So if a team is really good at running the ball, but then all of a sudden they have some where they – where they uh, pass the ball well, they're, that often they're most likely going to win that game. Th this basketball team is built to get the ball inside. Barnes wants to get the ball inside. Mm -hmm. And so if they do that, and then they also shoot the ball well, they're going to win a lot of basketball games. So if they do shoot the basketball well, it's because that's more complementary mm -hmm. to the, really the style that Barnes wants to play. Well, and we talked about it last week, and this is the – I'll come back at you, the football-basketball thing. Bas football, to me, seems like a sport where it kind of builds from week to week, whereas basketball, maybe it's just because you play two each week and you play 40 games, but it's much more of a ping-pong thing. Mm -hmm. We were here last Sunday, a week ago, talking about this is the deepest team. Now we're looking at it saying, okay, James is back from his injury, but we got to keep it on. Vescovi's been banged up a little. Now Ziegler's banged up a little. Do they still have depth? We talked about, wow, this post, the post guys are so versatile. Now we're here saying, well, the post guys didn't play well yesterday at all. It just seems like it, it's kind of a quick turnaround uh, from where we were last week to this week. And I want to talk about, in the next segment, I want to talk about does that show us some sort of blueprint for, was the Kentucky game a blueprint for what we're going to see later in March, as everyone seems to be writing and talking about now in the media? It's not the fans saying this. I guess they are. But I've seen a lot of the media guys saying, uh-oh, there was your red flag yesterday. Is it or is this just one of those ping-pongy kind of basketball days? If I can use another football analogy, Tennessee and basketball against Kentucky yesterday was like Tennessee and football against South Carolina. That's fair. Had a bad game. Yeah. So was it just a bad game, or was it? Oh, we all start. We all start seeing ghosts now. We'll debate that next um, when we come back. But let me also show you what's coming up uh, later in the show. As I said, was that loss a warning sign? Uh, what made Chris Lofton special? We've got a picture of him hanging on our set. Of course we're going to talk about Chris Lofton and show you the retirement and everything. Uh, Tennessee Portal News. We've got Ryan here to talk about the, the, the uh, roster issues. Uh, Tennessee's place in the football food chain. That should be an interesting uh, piece to this show. And then also shocking numbers about national titles. They are going to surprise you and much, much more. All right, so when we come back, how bad was that loss yesterday? Well, it was bad. But was it, a, was it a harbinger of horrible things to come? Ooh, <laughs> do we have to do the scary noises? Come on back on the Sports Source. We'll discuss.